Hey, I'm Eric Perkins of the Perkins Builder Brothers. Behind the camera is my brother, Jamie. What's up? And we're, what's up? We're gonna do something a little different today, but kind of the same. It's about construction. We had a lot of comments and questions on our videos about the type of siding that we used on our last project, which is LP Smart Side, and we used the expert finished version, which is pre-painted, which was fantastic, wasn't it, Jason? We did not paint the house. Oh my God. Somebody at LP. <laughs> painted the siding before we put it up. I also want to give a huge thanks to LP SmartSide for providing our siding materials on our last project. Here's the three things that I'm always thinking about when choosing a siding product or really any product for a house we build. And you're probably thinking the same thing if you're deciding on what to use on your own project. Number one, cost. Is the product I want to use affordable compared with anything else? Number two, ease of installation or even safety of installation. And number three is the overall durability. How long will it last without going bad? I've assembled in front of us here the four most common types of cladding or exterior siding used here locally or in the United States that are in the approximate price range that LP SmartSide is. And so let's take a look at those. Uh, we have some vinyl siding, and this is actually skirting, but the siding is made out of the same stuff. This would be the least expensive, but there are some luxury vinyl options that are probably more expensive than some of these other wood or engineered options. Number two, we have this wood lap siding. This is probably, so oh, it is cedar, I smell it. Mm. That's cedar. Now cedar is probably more expensive than any of these, but you can get this in pine, uh, which is less expensive. So that's number two, very common lap siding here. Uh, number three is the LP Smart Side, and this is the pre-finished version. This is an engineered wood product, and that's what we used on our project. Number four, we have a fiber cement, and we're just going to say generic brand here, uh, piece of siding, eight inch. And this is what people commonly call like concrete siding. Uh, it's not really concrete, it's, it's a fiber cement. So those are all in the same realm of cost, and those would be generally your options if you have a normal amount of money and you want to have a house built here. Let's rewind to number one, the vinyl siding, and let's talk about pros and cons. Everybody loves pros and cons. So number one pro actually is that it does not need to be painted ever, hopefully. <laughs> it comes pre-colored, right? And the con to that though is that it can fade in the sun over time, and then you, you can paint it actually. It has to be specialty paint to paint over it so it doesn't fall off. So that's a pro and a con, I guess I would say. Number two con is that if you cut it with a saw, and it's cold, it, it splits, it's very brittle. And for that reason, let's go ahead and just do that. If you hit it with a rock with a weed eater or something, it will go through the material and not look very sightly. So it's not super durable, even if it has a solid backing, like where I just hit it with that hammer. One advantage is that you can cut it with snips. Jamie cut this with a carbide tooth saw blade. Which, What's wrong with that? <laughs> which is not advisable. You can cut it with like a fine tooth saw blade on a circular saw. And so, but I wouldn't recommend the old carbide tooth there, bud. Mm. <laughs> a couple more final advantages, disadvantages of the vinyl. Number one is you can pressure wash it. Um, it doesn't have like a paint surface that would come off. So that's nice. It will tend to mildew, that's not nice. And also it just kind of hooks together. Uh, it laps over the previous row, snaps together. And in heavy wind, you've seen this on hurricane coverage on the news, this stuff can tend to just blow off the side of the house because it's in these big long sheets that can catch the wind, uh, sort of like a sail and just see ya. Final thoughts on the vinyl siding. It's not my first choice. I don't recommend it to clients a lot that we're building for and we've not used it a lot. One of the things for me is I just don't love the way it looks. And so for me, that's a big thing. You're gonna build this beautiful house and then cover it with something that you don't love the look of. And that for me is a major detracting factor. So that's the reason we don't really recommend it and don't use it much. Moving along, number two, our lap siding made out of wood. And we've used this tons on, on homes over the years, especially further back. So let's take a look at this stuff here. Uh, advantages, disadvantages. Um, an advantage is it's readily available. You can buy it anywhere. You can paint it any color you like. You can recoat it. You can stain it so you can get a nice rustic look if you want a wood look. If you stain it, it's not gonna last as long. Obviously the paint helps to protect it from UV rays better than the stain. And the number one, I'd say disadvantage of this is it is a fully natural product. 
and so it has grain, which makes it a lot stronger in one direction, but a lot weaker in the other, and let's demonstrate here. This has actually got a little bit of a split to start with, like a lot of the boards do, so you'll end up having to trim you know, that much before you install to have a good installation, but you can take this piece along the weak orientation of the grain and just, that was actually easier. Hey, that was my piece <laughs> of siding, bro. That was easier than I thought it was gonna be. But you know, so it, it tends to split. And so if you have to nail in a line or nail a narrow piece, you have to pre-drill or it will split and it will tend to split over time. Uh, also wood boring insects like to eat it. I'm thinking of uh, trying to think of some good things here. Um, you can hand plane it. <laughs> you can hand plane it. So yeah, you can cut this with a regular saw, regular chisel, regular hand plane. So for installing, it doesn't have any you know nasty uh, chemicals or things in it when you're cutting it. So this is a product we've used a lot, but the main disadvantage is just the sturdability. That's Sturdy. one of your words. <laughs> sturdability over time because of the lack of strength in the grain direction there. Up next is our LP Smart Side, and this is the Expert Finish version, which is pre-painted. You can also buy it in Primed. And the Expert Finish version has this uh, shiplap joint, which is really cool. It, uh, it laps over the next piece, and it has a spacing guide so that you can space it correctly, helps keep water out, yada, yada. This is my top choice for siding for the price, and that's why we recommend it to all of our clients. So let me tell you about it. It's an engineered wood product. Uh, versus the uh, natural wood product that snapped really easy. It's much stronger, it's stranded together, so you can see you can't bend even, or, or of course snap this. It's the same thickness on both sides, so you don't have as much waste. You can put this side up or this side up versus the regular saw and lap siding that is much thicker on the bottom edge, uh, which you can't flip this over and use it upside down. So that's two of the main advantages. And the third thing is that this stuff is really durable. It doesn't dent. You can install it even in thin strips, like where you have to rip underneath of a window. And it stays you know, rigid enough for a couple guys to install it and nail it up there. Versus some of the other sidings on cuts like that, the material can get very fragile and it's really hard to install. And it's not the same as regular OSB. That's what a lot of people imagine, a sheet of OSB, you grab it off the shelf at Lowe's. That's not this, and the durability of this product really comes into how it's made. And it's actually treated with this process called SmartGuard, which protects it from fungal decay and also from termites, and gives each one of these strands kind of a waxy coating that resists water. And this is super dense and super compressed compared to regular OSB, and it's very hard. Some other advantages and reasons that we usually recommend this as our siding on our custom homes is that it comes in 16 foot length boards, so you have less butt joints, but yet it's light and easy to maneuver and install. You can install it with like a two man team uh, because the material is strong enough for its own size and thickness that it doesn't break. So you can handle it easy, hand it up, nail it to the wall. A big deal for me is that we can cut this type of siding with our regular woodworking tools like regular circular saw, hand saw, and especially the table saw for long rips. That makes it super easy, super fast, and you get nice fitting pieces for a nice looking finish on your siding job. And rounding it out, we have our fiber cement lap siding option, which is very common here and probably closest in durability to the LP Smart Side and closest in look. A lot of people mistake them. They're not the same thing. And the biggest mistake people think about this fiber cement siding is that it is concrete siding, which is not solid concrete. It's fiber cement. So it is these layers of fiber cement that can degrade just like anything else. Uh, and it happens if it's not installed correctly, just like any kind of wood siding, it doesn't rot, but it will sort of just flake and fall apart if it continually gets wet. An example of that would be putting your siding straight down to your shingles, say on a dormer to where they wick the moisture up. And the instructions explicitly say in this to not do that, but it will degrade the material. It'll sort of delaminate and just fall apart. It's really brittle and more brittle than most people think, and it's really heavy. So you can only get it in 12 foot lengths because any longer and it would just snap in half when you picked it up. And in fact, even on a 12 foot board, if you just pick it up in the middle, it'll just sort of snap in half under its own weight. So you can imagine if you had to rip down a section of this to go say underneath a window, how fragile that little piece would get. And when you put it on or later, it is likely to crack or break or not do well. And we'll do a little demonstration here. This is just a piece I picked up at Lowe's here. And, um, 
you know, that's the problem. It's, it's brittle. It's not, it's not got a lot of strength in either direction. Also, when you're nailing it, it can sort of split. And so for that reason, I don't really love the way it looks installed compared with the LP smart side where you can use regular tools. You can lift the piece up. It's light and it doesn't split that easily. Also, this is a masonry product and masonry products do absorb water. I'm going to kind of do a demonstration of that. You can see it sucking the water in uh, from that puddle. See that? So it does absorb moisture so it can hold moisture and actually degrade whatever kind of wood material is behind it pretty easily. In the effort of all fairness, we'll dump some water on the smart side as well and see what that does. You can see it sort of just runs off of there, which is how it's designed. So. Well, I've soaked your workbench here in water. <laughs> Thanks for that. And we've looked at all these different kinds of sidings and that's basically boiling it down to why as a company, as builders, we use LP SmartSide. I don't want this to sound like an infomercial for SmartSide, but we really do use it. And those are really the reasons why we do partner with them just in all fairness. And they do give us products for our builds, but we did use their products for decades before they gave us the first thing on our own fruition, paying full price. So I hope that clears up some of the questions and answers people's questions about why we choose to use what we use.